Hello, I'm Captain Iceblock. I represent Storm Spirit players around the world, and inside the channel, you'll find guides on Storm, other heroes, middle lane mechanics, streams, and coaching sessions. Your support keeps the content flowing, and if you'd like to contribute, find out how down below. With all that said, let's go. Time and time again, whenever there's a discussion on the internet about Ember Spirit, you can hear people talk about how Ember is supposed to be the hero that sets up the tempo of the match. Well today, we're going to explore what is setting up the tempo and why Ember is the perfect hero to do so. As always, while the match will be explored from Ember's perspective, other heroes that come online early, such as Storm, Monkey King, Kanka, etc. can also dictate the pace of the game. Let's first take a look at this middle matchup. Both Ember and Sky operate pretty similarly. During the early game, they rely on spells more than items. However, while Ember with an extra 1k gold is simply a tiny bit more efficient, Sky Mage utilizes the same extra 1k gold entirely differently. With just a few extra intelligence items, his mana pool and damage output makes him significantly more dangerous. And what I mean by this is that while Sky is better at utilizing the early game gold, he is not a good hero to acquire that gold, unless he gets a favorable mid matchup as his only strength is taking down heroes, not flash farming lane or jungle. As long as I make survival my number one priority of the lane, Sky Wrath will be unable to snowball. And just like that, we are on the first step of dictating the tempo of the match. An underfarmed Sky Wrath is no longer a threat in the middle and can be easily killed either alone or with a gank. Dyer's mid towers have no! technical difficulties. Do it a couple of times and he'll have to either farm jungle really slowly or attempt to gank with his team. This is Gabe Newell. Thanks for playing Dota 2. Double kill. And this brings us to the second step of setting up the tempo. From this point, Sky Wrath wants to either jungle or attack with his team, right? Well, what happens if we remove his team from the equation too? By continuously pressuring the side lanes, we ensure that instead of comfortably farming the lanes, the enemy now has to play more cautiously because Ember has kill potential in whatever lane he shows up. And if the enemies are playing defensively, they will be too worried about where they can safely farm instead of trying to execute any pickoffs. That was unreal. Oh no. If you were a millennial, I'd say wicked double kill. Burn away your ignorance. So let's recap. First, by properly identifying our priorities, we've made sure enemy mid cannot be aggressive. Then, by utilizing the fact that enemy mid cannot be aggressive, we begin to be more aggressive ourselves. 
This results in the entirety of the enemy team having to play in smaller and smaller spaces as they try to farm their first bigger items to counter our engagements. However, at this point our entire team has gotten way too fat. Essentially, from this point onward, the enemy simply cannot leave the base without the risk of dying. And there you go. In a typical match, you'd might want to just play it safe, farm some lanes, some jungle, some towers. In other matches, such as this one, if you can identify when the enemy team is at its weakest and utilize that time frame, the opponents might never recover. From the moment we won the mid lane, we've continuously dictated the tempo of the match all the way until victory. And this concludes today's topic. Thank you for watching, good luck. structures. just couldn't save that bottom tower. Dyer's top tower, you know the drill. Dyer's top tower's getting beat down. Comforting rune of regeneration. The Dyer might want to mine their top tower. I'm ecstatic! This reward. Transcends expectation. The time towers getting the business. <laughs> Oh, no.